Hello friends! I am so excited you're here. We are going to learn how to paint a lighthouse in oil paint. Uh, my name is Crystal and this is the Create with Crystal YouTube channel. And I am an artist, an author, and a mother. And on my channel you will be, I will be posting videos every Thursday teaching you how to paint with acrylic, watercolor, oil, um, I want to help you. I'm going to give you an amazing time-saving tip at the end of every video that will help you learn how to be an artist on the go during your busy life. And so I hope that you will subscribe. I need 1,000 subscribers. So please subscribe. Share this video with your friends, your family. Uh, please comment, ask questions, share the video, and let's get started. So I'm putting this picture of all the swatches. I do not want this to overwhelm you, but I explained kind of how to do this. And you'll just use one, two, or three of these swatches when you're painting. And it really helps you create a harmonious painting and not to use too many colors because you just want to have one, two, or three of these. And it will give you like a hundred colors to choose from but it will be very harmonious. So reach out to me if you have questions and you don't understand how to make these swatches. But you know, really what you're doing is you're first, you're making big puddles of paint on the top. So like yellow ochre to ultramarine blue. And those are your bigger puddles. Then as you drop down below, you make small little tints of white added to each of the puddles. And so you're going to do like yellow ochre with a tiny bit of ultramarine blue and you'll have more and more and more white. So these are just beautiful, rich colors. And I really hope that you will make these swatches. I know it looks overwhelming, but this has saved my bacon a million times with paintings. Being able to pull out this, it's on two poster boards and I just taped them and folded them together. and this has answered so many questions like how do i make this color what color do i need for my clouds and i just go to my swatch poster board and i find the color i'm looking for and then i know what to what to mix it with so that is very helpful how to paint a lighthouse in oil so first you'll need to gather your art supplies um, in the show notes, there's a list of the brushes, the additional supplies, and the oil paint. And oil paint dries very slowly, and it can create some very realistic and beautiful effects. Some art buyers will only buy oil paintings, not acrylic. So oil is a very popular medium. We are copying a Thomas Kincaid painting, and we really appreciate and want to give credit to his work as an artist. Uh, he's passed away, but I love his work. When purchasing acrylic paint, there is a big difference between high quality and low quality. But when it, when it comes to oil paint, it's all amazing. So you can buy the cheapest brands and still have amazing results. Um, the second step is to sketch the image on canvas in pencil. Just freehand it or use a grid to transfer the drawing on. And if you're doing the grid transfer concept, just focus on each square of the grid. You can do a four square or a nine square. Um, then the third step is lay in an imprimatura, which is a thin wash of oil paint, thinned with turpentine or mineral spirits, which establishes values in sepia tones. You can do it with burnt sienna or and some yellow ochre. This wash is thin enough that it dries in a few minutes and then the next layers of paint can be added in thin layers. Some of the imprimatura should still show through as the other layers are added. In this painting, um, you it's oil, but you could also use the same colors of burnt sienna in acrylic paint and then paint oil on top with fantastic results, especially because acrylic dries very fast. You don't ever put acrylic on top of oil, but you can put oil on top of acrylic. Um, one of the best definitions I found to describe this painting stage called Imprimatura was on Wikipedia. And here's a portion of the text from Wikipedia. 
and premature is a term used in painting, meaning an initial stain of color painted on a ground. It provides a painter with a transparent toned ground which will allow light falling onto the painting to reflect through the paint layers. The term itself stems from the Italian and literally means first paint layer. The imprimatura provides not only an overall tonal optical unity in a painting, but is also useful in the initial stages of the work since it helps the painter establish value relations from dark to light. And that's, this is my interjection, that is where most of the problems happen in painting is with value, the dark to light, if you get it wrong. So back to Wikipedia. It is most useful in the classical approach of indirect painting where the drawing and underpainting are established ahead of time and allowed to dry. The successive layers of color are then applied in transparent glaze or semi-transparent layers. Care is taken not to cover the imprimatura completely, allowing it to show through the final paint layers. This is effective in particular in the middle to dark shadow areas of the work. An imprimatura is usually made with an earth color, such as raw sienna. Okay, so then... The next step, after you've kind of laid in those brown sepia tones and got your values established, is to lay in the underpainting. You lay in the darkest dark so there will be dimension when the lights are added later. Do not paint thick and goopy or you will be painting in soup. Paint thin. It's called paint fat over lean. Paint in the dark areas of the bushes, the water, the rocks, and so forth. Okay, then the fifth step is add a blue glaze in the sky. Um, after I finished this step, I had painted for about five hours, and then I let it sit overnight so it dried somewhat. And I'm going to give you some fantastic tips about brushes. You want to paint with dry brushes, not saturated brushes that have tons of turpentine or mineral spirits dripping off the brush. You, if you ever clean a brush, you dry it very, very good. If you clean up your brush, make sure you dry it so well on blue paper towels. This uh, blue Scott shop paper towels are critical, uh, must have item for your oil painting supplies. They are specifically designed to be absorbent and ideal for cleaning oil and grease in automotive um, shops and for oil painting for artists. I recommend ripping the blue paper towel in half, taping it down on two sides on your palette, and it will last a really long time. Having a clean and dry brush is critical in oil painting, and these paper towels work wonders in drying your brushes. Step six is add the colors on top of the darks. I weave all around the painting, adding lighter colors on top of the darks. Uh, don't stroke deeply into the paint or the painting will get muddy. Your light colors, like you're painting on top of icing and icing a cake, gently stroke on new paint over the wet paint and then leave it alone. Don't overwork it and get it muddy. Number seven step is soft edges and atmospheric perspective are key to creating a realistic landscape. Soft edges are the farther away items such as the trees and ocean horizons should be very soft and feathery. Atmospheric perspective means that the faraway objects in the painting will appear more blue to the eye, while the closer items will have more warm and yellow tones. Step eight, add the details to the bricks, rocks, and so forth. Step nine, add some texture and thick paint. The final layer can have some thick paint in the brightest areas. Because people love art with texture, because one tell, can tell it's an original and it adds dimension to the artwork. And then the last final step is add your signature to the front and date the back of the painting. So have fun painting this beautiful lighthouse and then stay tuned and find the other video that is the keeper of the flame, the story of the lighthouse. So I have not told you every single thing to do in this painting, but I've given you a ton of fantastic tips that have helped me so much with understanding how to manage oil paint. Just getting over the little hurdle of figuring out how to use this 
paint that doesn't dry for a week um, is kind of a little tricky. One of the art supplies that I recommended in the beginning of the video, just in the show notes, is Griffin Alkid paint and it dries almost too fast. It dries within three hours to five hours and um, I would recommend just buying the white and then as you mix that with all your colors it will slow it will dry your painting faster so that you as you're learning how to paint you're you're not messing up your under layers so um because what happened for me when i started painting in oil uh and it took a week to dry and i didn't want to lose the bottom layers i wouldn't paint for a week and then when the week would roll around i was already excited about something new and so i totally lost my momentum and i wouldn't go back and finish all these oil paintings so for me i have to just paint wet on wet and i've learned how to do it paint really thin and then get thick at the end i am so excited for you to hear the story the keeper of the flame and you'll only probably get to hear the first paragraph here but if you click on the other video called um, how to paint a lighthouse the story then you will get to hear the entire story of the keeper of the flame while you watch this painting in time lapse so i hope you enjoy it the keeper of the flame by crystal meldrum Far in the bitter north, there was a cold and stormy isle that rose from treacherous waters with sinister mermaids called sirens sang night and day. The islanders of Cottage Isle were accustomed to donning ear coverings whenever they went outside to keep from falling victim to the music. Their wee babes, too young to abide their bonnets for long, were kept snug inside while their mothers sang them lullabies. For sirens sang beguiling tales of treasures found deep in the sea, beckoning sailors to Siren Island with stories of rivers of silver, streets paved with gold, and jewels as plentiful as pebbles. Their enticing tunes promised a man could fill his pockets and never need to work again. The truth, me friend, is that the sirens lured men to their island to siphon out their souls and freeze their hollow shells within icy glaciers. Now and then, islanders found these glacial remains on the beaches and carried the poor beings to their cellars. Alas, none of their efforts could melt them. The islanders could only pray for the lost souls to wake them from their sleeping death. Although Siren Island was 30 leagues away from the isle, seafaring travelers depended upon a single lighthouse for safety. Well, I hope you had a blast painting this with me. I had a blast painting this. And so I hope that you'll um, like and subscribe, comment, ask your questions so I can help you learn how to create and you're on Create with Crystal YouTube. And before we go, I'm gonna tell you your amazing tip, which, um, how to be an artist on the go. I learned this from Julia Cameron in the book, The Artist's Way. And one of her fantastic tools, she has two tools, morning pages and art field trips. And I'm gonna tell you about art field trips. So her tip is once a week, you take yourself to some kind of an art adventure. Uh, maybe you take yourself to an art museum or uh, Barnes and Noble or even like um, even a store, a quilting store. Just and then talk to the employees or just ask questions and ask yourself questions. Write them down. Um, take notes. Just when you go places for the opportunity to develop your art and just what you know you just ask questions then you actually you're continuing your learning journey just as if you were in college and this last week i went on an art field trip me and my friend susan we went to the spring city art studio tour 
and I learned so much. It was amazing. I mean, I got to go in the art fun bus of Jeff Hine, an artist, and see how he works. I got to go paint with Cassandra Parsons, one of my favorite artists, and she showed me how she creates her amazing straights. Her paintings have just these impressionistic straight strokes. And I mean, if I would have stayed home, I wouldn't have had all these amazing learning opportunities. So go on art field trips. And you know, that's how, you know, I learned about these amazing blue Scott shop towels is by, I went and painted at Howard Lyons Art Studio for a $10 face um, painting class. Um, like a um, head painting in oils and then I David Malin taught me about these amazing shop towels so you just learn little things every time you go on an art field trip and one last thing about art field trips is like I used to have to beg people to go with me to art museums and because nobody wanted to go and I was just trying to drag Harry like please go with me and then when I learned about art field trips that I could just Ask myself, hey Crystal, do you want to go to an art museum? <gasps> yes, I do. I really want to go. And then guess what? I could get in the car and I could take myself. And I didn't have to wait for a friend or talk anybody into going to art museums. It was so liberating. So I hope that you will go on an art field trip. It will help your art journey expand and create synergy just going places. So I hope that you will keep coming back to Create with Crystal.